Hi guys, Rufan from Overclocking TV. We are here in Taipei, Taiwan for the Master of Overclocking Arena 2013. Uh, the final for the first day, the classic competition just uh, end up. So um, my first question is going to be for, for Roman. So can you tell us more about what happened, who won, and uh, how that changed in the last last minute for the last stage? Well, in total, um, I have to say it was that the competition started quite slow um, with a setup and everything, and some messed up the time management with a SuperPi 32M and overclocking memory. And then once they they got to the CPUs and uh, to the memory. Uh, it went very fluently and uh, the cin uh, Cinebench was very good, we had a lot of results and in the end uh, the battle was pretty close between uh, Extreme Addict, uh, Tulsi and um, Lucky, Noob. Lucky Noob, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> well done, <Matt>. and <laughs> Yeah, well, and um, Lucky Noob just hit like in the, in the very last 10 seconds, he hit a, a higher score which pushed him to the second place from the third place, which was very, very impressive um, if you look at the time. So. Great competition. Good. And for your point of view, Massman, you, uh, I saw you were entering all the scores on the live board. Um, you had some, especially for Cinebench, the, the benchmark is much faster than the other one. So you're like a lot to do. So what was your point of view of the of the overall event and the, the final uh, top three people? Yeah. So uh, as you said, I was uh, I was in charge of keeping, uh, keeping track of all the scores and entering it in the scoreboard so people could see um, what kind of a rank they had and how they're evolving in the competition. And um, I, I did the same uh, kind of a job last year. So I already understood that when you go from the first stage to the second stage, people have their system up and running. And it's both uh, just CPU overclocking. So they know pretty much where they're going to start. And then after five minutes, everyone is sub submitting a massive amount of results. So you end up in a situation where um, there is there is 20 scores waiting to be submitted to the scoreboard. But I guess for, uh, for the people that were watching, that wasn't really a big problem because you're just seeing the competition evolve, right? It doesn't really, it's not really a big deal if it's seven minutes after the score was actually achieved. Um, but it was very interesting to be, to be sitting uh, behind the scoreboard. And uh, also, yeah, I, I got a little bit, I, I, no, I got excited when I was seeing the, when I was seeing the scores uh, pass by because you have some kind of an idea of if, if this person submits a better result, he's going to go up in the ranking. And every time I submitted uh, a result or two results, I was checking back at the scoreboard, seeing, OK, what is, the, what is the difference now? So yeah, it was very interesting and very exciting. Because especially the way uh, the ranking system is made, we're going to go uh, a bit more on that. It's each benchmark is from the reference of one score, and then each of these scores counts in percentage improvement and the percentage rift at the, at the overall score. So every change, uh, it's not based on the ranking, but every change can, uh, can impact, like, especially like Lucky Noob, what happened with him, like submitting the score at the very last minute. It was, it was not the top three score, but he managed to jump from the third place to the second place just for that. Yeah, I think in, in that kind of a way, it's more of a, of a personal challenge than a direct competition, right? Yeah, what, what, you, what you have to do is get a, the highest performance increase over a baseline score. And every single little bit that you push your score further means that you can go up in the ranking. You're not uh, depending on what other people are doing in the benchmark. So um, SuperPy 32M was 40% of the score, Cinebench only 20% and then 3D Mark was 40% again. And I think that um, the, the, the scores and the baselines were, uh, were, were very accurately set, which means that at the end of the competition, you had, yeah, you had, you had uh, three teams within 0.4%. And even until the, the middle of the, of the third stage, rank uh, 3 to 10 was within 1.5%. Uh, so it was a very, very uh, tight competition. Yeah, that's true. Um, Roman, as a master judge, uh, what was your best experience for this event? I mean, for the first day, the, the competition day. Yeah. Well, I was actually impressed that everything is going that good or that well, because um, I expected more uh, issues with screenshots or something, verification. Um, but we had only one, one screenshot where we had a... a small problem uh, but in the end it, it, it didn't matter so I'm really really happy that everybody um, made uh, the screenshot in the in the correct way and uh, we didn't have to do anything uh, which uh, had a big impact on the final result so it was a very very good conclusion yeah especially as they compete per score and not per ranking yeah. if they disqualify for one score they they fall down to the other score, so they lose percentage and yeah. they lose point for that. Well, the, the good thing about this system is that you uh, you don't have to beat a, a single result you just um, uh, you gain your final score by just by the percentage of the overclocking, which is the, the main idea of this uh, kind of overclocking event. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. And you, Masman, your 
best memories or my memories is still fresh but best moment of the day um uh, when you had like the 20 scores to update in the la- in the scoreboard that was definitely the worst part of the day because i had to go to the toilet as well so i was trying to work through and every time i did one score two other people were lining up with a new score and it was it was tough at that moment it was a very uh how should i say uncomfortable moment for me i guess the best moment was actually uh maybe at the very end Wait, when you went to the toilet or yeah <laughs> Yes, yes, that was the first uh, summum of the competition. And the second ultimate summum of the competition was at the, at the very end when, uh, when the, the three uh, competitors, uh, the, the top three, were uh, both, uh, they were all three still submitting results. And you could see that the, 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 the scores were so, so tight. And it was, it was a matter of 50 or 100 points in 3D Mark. And that was the, uh, interesting to, to follow, yeah. Especially that we saw the last run of uh, Lucky Noob directly on the live because we had the recording on his computer. So we saw him like uh, finishing and say, I, t- I told you to turn around, just watch the thing. Hey, you're going to post a better score than what you have. So the ranking can change still. And that changed. He jumped from the third place to the second place. So that's quite interesting. Anyway, I think that's all for, 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 for today. Uh, we're going to see uh, tomorrow for the freestyle and uh, see uh, how, how that goes. All so right. thanks, guys. Thank you very Good much. Good work. Thanks. And keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. Keep pushing it.